Wer mich liebt, der liebt auch meinen Hund. Leckerli, leckerli. Me being the romantic soul that I am, when I proposed to my wife, I didn't want to get her an engagement ring. She did, of course, get an engagement ring later down the line. Mahlzeit, Richie here again. Now, if you watch my last video, you will know that this is part two. If you haven't seen that video, go back, watch that, that one first, because I had originally recorded a whole lot of material for one video. It turned out to be so much that I made two parts of it. So this is now part two of the video about German proverbs and their English equivalents. Now, as you will have seen in part one, I broke this down into four different lists. I had gone through a whole list of German proverbs, which I was familiar with and also knew that there was an English equivalent, which was pretty much a direct translation. And I considered both to be in frequent common use in both languages. We got all the way through that list and then I started looking at a list of proverbs that were for me much more common in German than they are in English. And then... I had to cut the video because it was getting too long and this is where we're going to pick that up um, now. After that list we're going to go through a list of proverbs which are more common in English but there is a German um, equivalent but for me they are more typically English and then there's a whole list of ones that I just fished out which are either new to me or I thought merited further comment. I just found them interesting and that will be the final part of this video. Thank you very much for tuning in and roll the video. According to Wikipedia in English, we do in fact say a lie has short legs. Never heard of it before, but the German equivalent, I'm very familiar with it. It's Lügen haben kurze Beine. Exactly the same meaning, direct translation, except it's lies plural in the, in the German and one lie in the English version. I have heard this one in English, but the German is much more common for me. It's a very, very common German saying proverb. Man soll kein Öl ins Feuer gießen. Don't it's literally meaning um, don't add fuel to, the, fuel to the fire, don't make things worse. If there's already a fire raging, don't pour oil on it, just leave it alone, shut your mouth, don't make things worse. Here's one I only knew in German and I th thought I'd heard a slightly different version of it. It's apparently Neue Besen kehren gut, new brooms clean well. Direct equivalent translation. Um, I was thought, thought I'd heard, probably got this wrong, ein neuer Besen kehrt gut in the singular, not the plural. But anyway, you understand. This one I think is really nice and it's very common in German. I've heard this a lot. Wie man in den Wald hineinruft, so schallt es heraus. Literally, the English equivalent is just as one calls into the forest, so it echoes back. I um, think it's a really nice image. Treat others like you would like to be treated. Do unto others as you'd like them to do to you or whatever. Nice sentiment. This is also a really nice one that I find is very common. Wer nicht hören will, muss fühlen. I know the English one, I have heard it, but it's not so common. It sounds quite antiquated now. He that will not be ruled by the rudder must be ruled by the rock. What it means is, if you don't listen to people with experience, if you don't want to learn and listen, then you're going to have to make your own experiences and you probably end up by hurting yourself. If you, I don't know, start using uh, dangerous power tools and don't follow the uh, advice of experienced people, you may cut your finger off and then learn the hard way. Learning the hard way. Okay, this is my final list then. These are ones that I have found in the list of German proverbs. Remember, this is a list specifically of German proverbs with their English equivalents. But these for me were um, proverbs that I find are more common, more commonly used in English, or at least I'm more familiar with them and I've heard them less in German. Now, they do exist. Wikipedia have done their research and I'm sure these are, are correct, and it may just me also be my lack of experience, but um, here are the ones that for me are more typically English. The German, then the first one, Blut ist dicker, dicker als Wasser, Blood is thicker than water. I haven't heard it so much as the idea that family is more important, the family bonds are, are stronger than any other bonds. If you share blood with someone, you share a very close bond. Arzt hilft dir selber. I'm very familiar with the English equivalent physician heal thyself. This, um, this is very similar to that about um, people in glass houses and, and the other one. Um, Kehre vor deine Eigentur, whatever, sweep before your 
your own front door. Do not reproach another person for something of which you are also guilty. Similar, but yes, doctor, physician, heal yourself. Don't criticize others for your own faults. Deine Wäsche wasche zu Hause. Um, I've never really heard that in German. It's probably uh, perfectly common. It's just my lack of experience, but um, I'm very familiar with. There's two English equivalents here in my list and from Wikipedia. The first one, it's an ill bird that fouls its own nest. Not so um, familiar with that one, but don't wash your dirty linen in public. Um, I've heard that lots of times. And here the little explanation is quite nice. It is considered contemptible to defy the rule of solidarity by revealing facts harmful to the group one belongs to. Here's one I've only ever heard, but I've heard very often as a sports analogy here it is. The best of Verteidigung is der Angriff. The best form of defense is attack. You always hear it in football. Apparently the Germans have this really nice proverb. It sounds really great. Eile mit Weile is even better than in the, in the uh, English. The English is very common though. More haste, less speed. Sounds great in German, doesn't it? Eile mit Weile. I'm going to start using that, whether it's common or not. This is a really great one with a really nice origin story. Geschenk vom Feind ist nicht gut gemeint. Never heard that in German before. The literal translation will be a gift from an enemy is not well intentioned. It just means do not trust your enemies. The English equivalent though is beware of Greeks bearing gifts. And this of course is a reference to the Greeks and the wooden horse of Troy. The Greeks in the old classic story, the wooden horse of Troy. Yeah, it's an allusion to the Trojan horse. It's a gift from the enemies, which was in fact a, just a trick to get into the city and uh, take the city. Gleiches muss durch Gleiches geheilt werden. The very common English phrase, the equivalent is fight fire with fire. In German it's much more general. It's you have to heal like with like. Um, this um, reminds me of another common um, proverb phrase or saying whatever. Um, the hair of the dog that bit you. If you're suffering from a hangover in English, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, how many of you are Germans, but um, if you're suffering from a hangover, in English on the next day you are advised to take hair of the dog. The hair of the dog that bit you of course is another drink of alcohol to cure your hangover. This one's ever so funny. Um, I've, I know it in, in English, never heard the German one, but it sounds really funny. It could be from uh, German me when he get when he's interrupting my videos. It's been aber gespannt. Yeah, the German is Hals Maul, so fliegt dir keine Mücke hinein. Yeah, Hals Maul, Holzkopf. Yeah, the English is um, a closed mouth catches no flies. I think it's uh, just advice to keep your mouth shut if you're going to be talking rubbish. Um, otherwise, you'll be punished by having flies fly into your mouth or mucke, mosquitoes in uh, German. Here's one I seem to have put in the wrong list, but never mind. Hochmut kommt vor dem Fall. A very common one in German. And pride comes before a fall in English. Exactly the same direct equivalent. That should have been on my first list. Here we go then. Here's a good one. When in doubt, leave it out in English. Apparently there's a German equivalent that is Im Zweifelsfalle draußen bleiben. Here's one that is a, an English proverb that seemingly has a direct equivalent in German, but the translation makes me doubt what I always thought it meant. The English is the more the merrier. We always use this today. I think over time what happens is proverbs have an original meaning, but they get used and used for different meanings and misused over time. When we say, say the more the merrier, we generally use that to mean, I don't know, if you were getting together, throwing a small party or whatever, and someone says, um, can I bring a friend with me? We say the more the, more, the mer merrier. I'm just saying more people, um, the, the happier the party is going to be or whatever. So everybody's welcome. But the German um, translation, the German equivalent is apparently je toller desto besser. Je toller desto besser. Um, toll is not more in the sense of, of more quantity, but greater. So who knows? Better, greater, even better. Apparently in German there is a proverb, viele Handwerker verderben den Meister. Literally, many trades spoil the master, but the English equivalent as we speak of someone who is a jack of all trades, but master of none. That means if you can, generally, if you don't specialize in one something, you will never really become a master of that discipline. You 
you, you can be a, gen, a decent all-rounder, you can be relatively good at, at, at all different things, but you have, if you really want to master something, you really want to be the best at it, you have to specialise. So that's the end of that little list then, the ones that I found were more commonly in use in English, but did have indeed have a German equivalent. Now we'll just move on to my miscellaneous list, ones that I thought were particularly nice and merited further comment. Here's one, das billigste ist immer das teuerste. Literally, the most, the cheapest things are always the most expensive things. We're all familiar with this idea. I think it's a really nice idea. You may, let's say we're looking at a, a pair of shoes and you want to buy a pair of shoes. You can opt for the cheaper shoes that cost 20 euros or you can pay 60 euros for the more um, expensive shoes. But the 20 euro shoes are going to wear out after a month and the 60 euro shoes are going to last you years and years and years. The English equivalent in this case is really, really nice. I'm not one that I'm very familiar with, but it sounds great. Buy cheaply, pay dearly. And it also reminds me of a phrase that I've only ever heard from one person, an old family friend from uh, back in Yorkshire. He always used to say, a thing bought rate safe selt. Now in English, uh, English that was very, it's a very, very Yorkshire phrase. I'm, would like to look into that at some point. I think it's probably a, an old Yorkshire phrase or maybe just made it up himself. But a thing bought ray safe selt. Literally that would be in English, English that would be a thing bought correctly. It means if you buy wisely, if you make a, an informed purchase, what you have bought is aif selt, it's half sold. So something bought correctly is half sold already. Meaning if you buy wisely, you can sell very quickly. Buy the correct goods. You Obviously it's a tradesman's um, I'm saying, a proverb for tradesmen. Buy wisely and you can make a quick sale and make money. Nice one. That. A thing bought rate safe selt. This is an interesting one for me. This is obviously um, a universal European thing. Now, there are lots of different versions of this. The first one is Der Schuster hat die schlechtesten Schuhe. The English uh, equivalent is the shoemaker goes barefoot. In German it would be the cobbler or the shoemaker um, has the worst shoes. Translation, the ex explanation here would be working hard for others, one may neglect one's own needs or the needs of those closest to him. The, there's another um, version here which is very, very interesting for me. Schmieds Pferd und Schuster's Weiber gehen meistens barfuß. The smith's horse and the cobbler's wife usually go barefoot. The English um, equivalent, the actual saying is the cobbler's, cobbler's wife is worst shod. And this is very interesting for me because I'm not really familiar with these in German or English. I don't know that they're in um, common use, but it's one that I heard really, really often in Spain. And the Spanish proverb is en casa de herrero, cuchara de palo. Literally, it means in the blacksmith's house, there is a wooden spoon. This is really, really inter interesting for me on many levels in that, uh, first of all, my wife is Spanish and one of her names, one of her surnames, her second surname, Spanish always have two surnames, her family name, second family name is Herrero, literally um, blacksmith. And this idea of the wooden spoon in English proverbs, in English um, common English usage, the idea of um, wooden, a wooden spoon is a prize for coming last. It's people who are into rugby will know in the Six Nations there is a, a, a trophy for the winner of the Six Nations competition but the, the last place team also is awarded with a wooden spoon. It's always associated as being the booby prize, the prize for for the last place team, the least successful competitor. And the origins of this I happen to know is that um, in the in olden times, way back when in England, when a man wanted to get engaged to be married, um, poorer people did not have money for a, a traditional engagement ring. So there was no ring, there's no money for a ring. And I imagine this may have also even included blacksmiths. There's no money for a ring for himself. He's a metal worker doing doing um, work for other people, busy doing work for other people. But his wife, what would be the um, engagement present for his wife? It would indeed be a wooden spoon that he'd carved himself. And that's where this idea of the wooden spoon comes from. And now, me being the romantic soul that I am, when I proposed to my wife, I 
didn't want to get her an engagement ring. She did, of course, get an engagement ring later down the line. But when I actually asked the question, I didn't want to buy the ring, choose the ring myself, buy something that she didn't like or buy something that didn't, didn't fit or couldn't be um, adjusted to her size. So I got her a wooden spoon and I made I told her this long story about the idea of the wooden spoon, the concept of the wooden spoon, and then got down on one knee and said, so here's a wooden spoon and we'll get the um, engagement ring later. And that wooden spoon is still here in our lounge. Here's one I just really like the sentiment of Ehrlich wert am längsten. Honesty, honest, literally the translation would be honesty lasts the longest, but the English equivalent is honesty is the best policy. Um, I've always been brutally honest and maybe that's why I get along with Germans so well and why I like this proverb so much. Ehrlich wert am längsten. Here are some others that I was not familiar with in either language, but I just really like the sentiment of them. The German here is, wenn alle dir sagen, du seist betrunken, geh schlafen. Um, when everyone tells you that you're drunk, go to sleep. The English equivalent, I understand more what it means from the, the English equivalent. I mean, that's good advice. If you're drunk, go to bed. Um, but the English equivalent is, when all men say you're an ass, it's time to bray. Bray is the sound that a donkey makes, ass being a donkey. Generally means, if the consensus is you are such, then it's probably true. It's not necessarily advice for drunk people. Whereas, hair of the dog that bit you on the next day would be advice for drunk people. Here's a nice one, a nice sentiment. Wem Gott gibt ein Amt, dem gibt auch Verstand. A nice little rhyme as well. Um, whoever receives an office from God, he, is all, he also receives the understanding. The sentiment behind this is the English equivalent, first of all, where God bestows an office, he gives brains to fill it. And that's, I think that's a really nice sentiment. If you give somebody responsibility, they will grow with their responsibility. It's always good to entrust people with a little bit more responsibility, a little bit more authority and they will grow into their task. I think that's a nice sentiment and um, I think that works in a work situation. It's always nice if your boss gives you a little bit more to do and you can take pride in your work or whatever. Here are a couple of nice about um, nice ideas about the idea of leadership and teamwork, team building etc. In German, wenn jeder Herr ist, wer bringt aus dem Stalle den Mist? Literally, if everybody is the boss, who's going to muck out the barn? Who's going to do the easy menial tasks? That means not everybody can be a leader. You need people doing everyday tasks as well. Translation, where everyone is the Lord, who brings the dung out of the stable? Um, English equivalent, there are too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Here's another one then on a similar uh, subject. I just thought it sounded nice. Wer befehlen will, muss gehorchen lernen. Uh, translation, who wants to command must learn to obey. The English equivalent is apparently, who has not served cannot command. Like that sentiment, it sounds very, very military. Um, you have to serve your apprenticeship before you can go on to lead. So you have to pass through the ranks. Um, you need to gain experience at different levels before you can lead other men. That's pretty nice. Here's just a random one I threw in. I don't know why, I just like the sound of it. The sound of it. Wer Eier unter den Füßen hat, muss leise auftreten. The translation would be, he who has eggs under his feet must tread lightly. But the English equivalent is apparently, he that hath a head of wax must not walk in the sun. So if you have a head made of wax, don't walk in the sun. Good advice. Or wear a cap like I do most of the time. Here's another one then that is interesting to me, not because I know it in German or English, but because I know of an equivalent in Spanish, or in this particular case in Canarian Spanish. The German would be, wer Honig lecken will, darf die Bienen nicht scheuen. He who wants to lick honey must not shy away from the bees. The English equivalent would actually be, honey is sweet, but the bees sting. Basically saying, if you want something, you want your reward, you're going to have to work for it. You can't um, be work shy if you want your reward. Perfectly um, fine sentiment, but it reminded me of an old Canarian saying, Quien quiera lapas, tiene que mojarse el culo. He who wants lapas, lapas I think are limpets or barnacles, are like um, shellfish, these uh, shells that um, cling to the rocks. 
um, on the coast. This being from the Canary Islands, obviously the coast is very present, the, the sea is a very strong image. It literally means he who wants limpets or barnacles, who wants to go and um, fish these, this shellfish, he has to go and get his bum wet. Perfectly logical. You can't go, uh, you can't eat your, your seafood without getting wet first. One final proverb then, which is close to my heart. I just included it for gratuitous, cute animal content. It was, here's a German, Wer mich liebt, der liebt auch meinen Hund. The English equivalent, love me, love my dog. Yes, Daisy? Leckerli, leckerli. This is Daisy. Anyway, that's all from me for today, from me, from German me and from Daisy. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please do like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you want to support me and the channel further, check out my Patreon. You can support me on Patreon and join up there for the monthly Q&A. In fact, it's the end of the month now, so I'll be now preparing the Q&A for the next couple of days. That will be released over the next couple of days. If you want to check that out, check that out on Patreon. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me here, and I will see you in another video here on YouTube. Mach's gut, Leute!